Hey everyone, I'm back with a really simple effect called Match Luminance and I'm going to demonstrate its usefulness for cleaning up poorly shot texture elements. Just for fun I'm going to show this effect in five different software packages. So it'll be Nuke, Natron, After Effects, Photoshop and Fusion. So let's get started with Nuke and Natron. Okay, so I've got a side-by-side -side going here. I figured I can do these two at the same time because they're so similar. I got Nuke on the left and Natron on the right. Uh, first things first, we're going to import our clip or still. In this case, I'm just using a photograph. And I'm just going to exaggerate the problem so we can clearly see what we're dealing with. Now, we're going to make a constant color and we're going to sample the image and to get an average of the the color we want I'm just going to sample the entire thing and that will give us a approximation of the gray in this image and now I'm going to blur the image uh, quite a bit so I'm going to set the value to 200 here hello darkness my old friend And I'm going to merge the blur and the constant and set the operation to divide, making sure the B pipe is connected to the blurred image and the A to the constant. I'm going to merge the original image again with this with the divide and set that operation to multiply. It doesn't matter what order the pipe is for the multiplier, B or A, uh, it'll do the same thing. And done. We've taken the uneven light and evenly distributed it throughout the image while preserving the textural detail. Okay, in Photoshop now I've got a different image and as you can see there's some shadow on one half of the image and sunlight on the other. I'm going to make a new constant and just hide it for now. I'm going to sample the image and to make sure I get a, a decent area I'm just going to set the sample size to 101 pixel average and find somewhere inside the gradient to get a baseline color. Now that I've got my browny gray color for this image, I'm going to turn this layer back on. And I'm going to duplicate the background layer and put it on top. I'm going to set the blend mode to divide. And I'm going to blur this layer quite a bit. So if I go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to set the value somewhere around 100 pixels. Hit OK. I'm going to take another copy of the original background and put it on top again. This time I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. And it's made a little bit of a difference, but it's not quite good enough. So I'm just going to go and tweak the color value of the constant. And if you see as I scrub up and down, you can see the the image changing and I'm just going to push it darker until the bottom right corner looks good. We're losing a bit of luminance uh, for some reason in this image. But that's okay. I'm just going to add an adjustment layer to the top and choose levels. Then I'm going to pull the right level in to increase the brightness and I can move the middle level around if I want to get the right amount of contrast in and there's the texture. So now we've removed the light and shadow area but preserved the textural detail. Okay, we're on to After Effects. I'm going to step things up a notch here. I'm going to use a very uneven texture. This is a photograph of a tree, kind of close up. And I'm just going to try and flatten out some of the really bright bits and some of the really shadowy bits. Obviously I won't be able to fix the area on the far left, but let's see what we can do. I'm going to create a new solid and I'm going to select the orange color in somewhere in the mid range, somewhere around here. Okay, I'm going to duplicate my original image and put it on top, set the blend mode again to divide and blur this layer. So I'm going to go over to the effects and presets, find blur, get the Gaussian blur and boost that a lot might have to tweak the blurriness number if the slider doesn't go high enough. There we go. I'm going to get another copy of the original footage and put it on top and set the blend mode to multiply. And it's kind of working, but we're kind of just getting a orangey mush where the highlights used to be. So let's see if we can't make that look a little bit better. What's happening here is 
by default, After Effects works in an 8-bit color space. So if I sample these values here in our multiply mat, you can see they're maxing out at uh, 255, which is not as high as we need to go. So if we go over to our project tab and in the bottom section here where it says 8 BPC, if you click on that and make sure it pops up in the color tab and under the depth drop down menu, you want to select 32-bit float and that will allow our pixel values to exceed 255. And so when we sample these values now, you see that they're 2.4, 2.2. Now, now these values are actually much higher than the original 255, despite the fact that they're lower. It's interesting, I think After Effects might have shifted into a linear uh, color space, whereas previously it was in sRGB. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that, but it seems like that's what's happened here. So in linear space, uh, a value, a pixel value of one is equivalent to an sRGB pixel value of 255. So in a linear space with a value of 2.5, that's uh, more than double our original uh, pixel value. So now when we multiply this with our image, it's gonna make uh, the darker area much, much brighter. So we can see that here now, uh, where that shadow section has come out to the same overall luminance value. So now let's see if we can make this area on the left uh, a bit nicer and less flat. So I'm gonna take our original image uh, and duplicate it again. This time I'm going to draw a rotor shape around this nice textural area on the right and just get all the image in. I'm just going to soften the mask here a little so we can't see the trick and then I'm just going to move this entire area over to our problem section just like that. And rotate it a little so it fits in and doesn't doesn't duplicate. There we go. And blur it like we were doing before. And now we can see we're preserving a bit more random textural detail. It's a bit too strong, so I'm just going to drop the opacity just so we can get a hint of variation in there. And now if I show the original and after, you can see the texture is a lot more even. Uh, we're kind of pushing the effect to the extreme here uh, in this case, but you can see what it's capable of. The super dark shadowy area on the left uh, won't work, but I can just mask this off like so and just put the original back in there so it's not clipping just for presentation. And done. A flattened tree texture. Okay, some of you guys in the comments have encouraged me to try out Fusion because I like uh, the DaVinci Resolve software, so I'm still learning it, but I have managed to get this technique to work in Fusion, so here it is. I'm going to drag in my image like we did in the others, and using Shift Space I can bring up the tab menu, and we're going to get our constant color, which is called a color generator in Fusion. To sample the area, I'm going to disable the node or bypass and sample somewhere in the middle. And now we've got our gray color. Now for some reason in Fusion, they don't have the divide operation inside the merge node. I have no idea why they do this, but it is in the channel boolean node. So if we create one of these and there's two of these nodes, we want the one, the plural channel booleans node. And if we just add this under our channel generator and our green pipe to the image, under the operation section in here, we get divide. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So now we've got our divide and our color generator, and we want to make sure our yellow pipe is into the color generator and our green pipe is into the medium. And now we can blur this, jack that up quite a bit somewhere around there and create our final merge. This time the multiply operation is inside the merge node so we can get away with a regular merge. The yellow pipe to our image and our green pipe to our blur. Connect our output, select the multiply operation and there we go. The texture flatten technique inside of Fusion.
can see we've preserved all our textural detail, but the image is nice and even overall. Still got the texture in the super bright area and in the darker area, looks great. Cool, so that's it for this video. It was fun diving into the different software packages. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.